Good morning. My name is Joan Rebel, and I've been a member here for 41 years. And as such, I welcome you wherever you are on your journey. Today I have the honor of introducing Mary Dana Hinton. We're in for a treat. Dr. Hinton is the president of the College of St. Benedict, and she is a leader in every sense of the word. Having just spent a weekend at St. Ben's for my 55th reunion, I can attest that the college is thriving under her leadership. She makes us proud to call ourselves Bennies. Mary has taken on this enormous responsibility as a wife, a mother of three adolescent children, as an active citizen in the St. Cloud area, as the chair of the Minnesota Private College Council, and as a board member of the Association of American Colleges and Universities. In spite of all of that responsibility, she still takes time when we come back to campus to look each of us in the eyes and say, welcome back. And today, let's give her a big St. Joan of Arc welcome. Good morning, and thank you, thank you, thank, thank you for your very warm welcome and for this opportunity to share with you this morning. I confess I'm always surprised when I find myself the center of attention. Now, having given over 500 speeches during my presidency, you would think I would be used to it, but I'm always struck by being in the center. You see, my life is in the margins. Originally by birth and now by choice, I have come to believe that the margins, that place where people who are deemed unworthy are relegated, is my genesis, my shelter, and my place of nourishment. Because I choose to live at the margins, I have had to learn how to navigate life and leadership perhaps differently than those who primarily locate themselves in or come from the center. And to complicate this further, within those margins, much of my life has been defined by defiance. Now, for anyone who knows me, they will find this statement somewhat ironic. By all appearances, I'm the least defiant person you'll meet. I often wear pink shoes. I believe in the inherent goodness of all people. I am the ultimate rule follower, and my family teases me and calls me Pollyanna. <laughs> and yet, defiance is what enables me to dwell in the margins. Here's my earliest remembered example of defiance in the margins. So picture it, mid-1980s, junior high school career assessment day. Now at that point in my life, standardized test anything was my strong suit. I dominated the bubble sheet and I looked forward to the task. I envisioned being lauded for my junior high school career assessment prowess. Classmates would finally realize that I was more than a jerry curl and severely crossed eyes. So I get my booklet, a bubble sheet, and a number two pencil, and I prepare to excel. With the sniff of that paper, I tear open the booklet and I begin. Name, address, phone number. And then, one of the most challenging questions I'd encountered in my life to that point. What are your parents' titles? Mr., Mrs., Mr. and Mrs., Miss, Ms., and there seemed to be implied disapproval next to that one, or Dr. and Mrs. Now, <laughs> I am among friends. <laughs> now let me be clear, the actual answer was very easy. My mother was proudly Mrs. Robert Henton, though my father had died a few years before this experience. But Mrs. was the correct answer. 
And at this point in my life in rural North Carolina, I'd probably never heard the word feminist. I was unaware of the movement. I was unaware of the complications of the movement for women of color. I had no idea about womanist, third wave Audre Lorde, or Betty Friedan. I just knew something was fundamentally wrong with that list because it completely left the option of Dr. and Mr. off as if it were some sort of impossibility. I spent nearly that entire test time thinking about this and what I was going to do about it. Suffice to say, my career assessment results were less than stellar. So it was then at that moment that my defiance was born. Eventually I realized it wasn't about the form and it really wasn't even about the titles. It was about having options available to me and not discounting my future before I even had a chance to think about it. It was about what was right and just and equitable. Quite powerfully, this early moment of defiance began the process of defining my self-understanding as a woman. It was at this moment that I realized that not only were the expectations for women different, but that we were defined largely in comparison to men. The margins being defined in comparison to the center. I learned in that moment that as a woman, I would be asked to define myself against what society expected of me, that as someone from the margins, I was being taught to define myself by the center. I knew then that that was not what I wanted for myself or my life, and my defiant soul hasn't looked back since. Now, if I knew then what I know now, I would have known that the laws of intersectionality demand that another moment of self-definition would not be far behind. Growing up poor and black in the rural South in the 70s and 80s was a challenging experience. Very few people of color could afford to be racially defiant. If we attempted to buck the standards set by the majority, we were asked, who do you think you are? or explicitly told, get back in your place. I was trying to navigate identity politics and find my voice without any insight into how. My deepest desire was simply to construct a space where I could be me and that was sufficient. A goal that I hear so many young people expressing today. And today I know that space was in the margins and that I wasn't alone. It's just those on the margin aren't valued as such or told of their strength. So here's another example. In 10th grade, I gathered up the courage to ask my high school guidance counselor to help me think about how to get into college as this appeared to be my way out of poverty. Even now, more than 30 years later, I can picture this tableau. I brought a great deal of energy into this meeting as I was excited to follow my mother's explicit direction of, quote, figure out how to go to college, end quote. <laughs> I also recall being taller than the guidance counselor and that she had to look up a little to make eye contact. As she made this eye contact, she explained to me that as a black woman, college was not an option for me. She essentially told me that my place in the world had been defined by others and that my job was simply to accept that place, to not even dream of something more. Her purpose wasn't to help me envision my success or pursue that success. Her purpose was to ensure my success was small and my hopes even smaller. Her goal was to conceal equity from me, to make certain that I didn't think, much less expect, that I could move beyond my current circumstance. Her goal was to reduce me. And honestly, for a few moments, days, weeks, years, in a sense, she was successful. 
For too long, I internalized some portion of what she said and doubted myself. I read the encounter as a failure on my part when really the failure was hers. With the most generous assessment, she simply failed to imagine a woman from the margins succeeding in the world. And yet, and yet I chose, even as she spewed her vitriol, to be defiant. At that moment, I knew I would go to college. I didn't know how, I didn't know where, but it was defiance in the margins that propelled me forward. So throughout my life, I have chosen to defy what the world set before me. The world had limited expectations for people like me, for women, for poor people, for people of color, expectations that needed defying. But my defiance in the margins could not be done alone. It was done with my mother, who never gave up hope that I would get a college education, though she only made it through the eighth grade. It was done with the Coopers, the family my mother cleaned for, who paid for me to transfer to a private school where they did believe I could excel academically. It was done with the vowed religious sisters I encountered in higher education who proved that grace and defiance could walk hand in hand. It was done with a community of people who chose to dwell with me in the margins, people who sacrificed for me to have opportunities, people who assisted me so that I could then help reframe societal expectations for others on the margins. Because of this community of hope, of love, and of compassion that I was blessed with in the margins, I learned that I could, that I had to be defiant, not only for myself, but for all those who dwell on the margins with me, other women, other people of color, others who don't have financial resources, those navigating disabilities, or those who have been marginalized because of who or how they love or identify. I learned that because of the margins, because of being defiant, I could help others. I learned that my gifts in life weren't despite the margins. They were because of the margins. So you see, margins are often thought of as extra dispensable space, and the people who come from and live on the margins are often readily dismissed as such. But here's the thing. The most important documents and decrees in history are noted for their margins. We honor language, ideas, and words within a text by framing them with margins. Margins may be thought of as boundaries or constraints, but they could just as easily signal where we begin, a roadmap for upward or forward movement. At their best, margins beckon to us and unleash us. So my life, my leadership, and my calling is based in the margins. My spirit was born and shaped on the margins, and I dwell by choice in marginal spaces. Leading from the margins means developing an ability to move not only toward the center, but through the center to reach and uplift others on the margins. Leading from the margins means helping those in the center explore and value their own margins and equipping them to recognize and value others on the margins. As we'll read in Galatians, you were called for freedom, brothers and sisters, but do not use this freedom as an opportunity for the flesh. Rather, serve one another through love. Collectively, let's free all of our voices to proclaim our value, to support one another, to make a difference. And let each of us use our freedom from wherever we stand in relation to the margins to serve one another through love. Thank you.